Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we're taking a look at a pair of binoculars that work by day and night. Plus we've got a roundup from the SHOT Show in Las Vegas. But before that, we're back out hunting with Stuart Wilson. in the summer. I've been feeding these guys for about, I don't know, something like four or five months now. Um, had it in one location and was getting hammered by uh, badgers. They were eating my, the peanuts out of the feeder. I was getting through something like 25, 30 kilos of peanuts in a week. At one point I was thinking, I've got all the squirrels from Yorkshire coming into these feeders. Um, but then when I checked the, checked the footage on the trail cam, it was, it was badgers. So, again, a little bit of a lesson in how high you put your squirrel feeders up. Um, we'll see how we get along. I'm going to get this loaded up, sneak into position in the box, and then uh, we'll try and bag a few squirrels. Just a quick snap, careful sneak through the woodland, avoiding any, any twigs underfoot. Obviously, uh, keeping a beady eye out for any any squirrels that may be in the location before I actually get to the box. Cold wind, I can feel it already. Just get myself nicely into the box without making too much too much noise. You're going to be a little bit of disturbance, but. Uh, Again, keeping a watchful eye for anything that may be close by for an early opportunity. I'm sure that door hole keeps shrinking. Sticks across into position. Some of you will be wondering why I've got the, um, the sticks across and through the pistol grip of the compactor. Um, the squirrel feed is about 10 yards away. Um, just seem to be sort of like the best tree to put the squirrel feeder to. And then locating this little, effectively a dough box, um, just for a bit of waterproof and a bit of shelter so that, you know, when it's horrible weather and you can't get out and do anything else with the egg. And, you can get sat in here somewhere comfy and you know obviously sit for a few hours fetch a flask if you need to do um, and it's just you know it's quite a comfortable spot to hunt from um, and the main reason for the sticks start of this uh, little uh, point that I was trying to make is that it just keeps the compatto the gun that I'm using in the right location um, I've got the fore end just rested onto the front of the, of the box here and with this sticks through, rested on either end of the um, the box, there's minimal movement when I have a squirrel on a, on a feeder um, or coming in close. Um, it literally is, you know, the gun is kind of in position. I can pretty much point it at the feeder as near as damn it and uh, just get comfortable onto the gun. Time to get uh, put it up and stay warm and get my mask on and for squirrel shows straight away between a couple of pheasants. And carefully get myself onto the gun and hopefully we should be in business. It's 
soon as he selects a piece of grain to gnaw on and sits up for me I'll uh, Scrubs off to a, a nice start there um, for squirrel down. Um, I didn't even let him get to the to the feeder, so uh, he was just sort of scrabbling around at the, at the bottom of the tree. Um, he was facing us at one point, um, which you know sometimes quite like that shot. Um, but his head was down and he was sort of feeding in the grain. So just waited for him to sit up. He chose the grain that he wanted to gnaw on, and when he was sat comfy and perfectly still, side on, um, put a pellet into him with a compactor. Second squirrel to show up there, it's just sort of come down that little fir tree. Um, he, uh, he, he wasn't particularly happy with the fact that there was a squirrel um, that I'd left at the, uh, at the bottom of the, uh, underneath the feeder, the first one we'd shot. Um, he came down really, really cautiously. Um, you know, he ended up bloody clonking. Um, I think I slipped the, the far end of the gun just slightly off the front. It was on the sling swivel, and just as I sort of made an almighty clunk and the squirrel just made a made off. Um, I'm kind of hoping that if I don't make any more noise, just sit tight, um, that he'll, he'll come back and he'll have another, uh, another look at the squirrel, certainly that's down. And sure enough, I haven't got long until uh, the squirrel quite cautiously edges itself down the uh, tree behind the squirrel feeder. I'm just going to try and sneak onto the gun again and see if I can get another another shot off. You see him twitching his tail. Really cautious. I'm sure that other dead squirrel's putting him off. Fantastic. Um, that second squirrel that had, had bolted up the tree. Um, I think he just crossed over, crossed over a few, and uh, came down. And he was on the on that back tree um, where I shot the first squirrel out of this box the other day. Uh, presented a nice little headshot. So there we go. Done and dusted. Um, I tell you, the wind is really cold. So I don't think I'm going to be hanging about much longer. I'm already sort of shivering and I'm going to sort of keep my fingers going to do the safety catch on the, on the trigger so we'll maybe make that do. Yeah I'm going to call it a day at that, I'm absolutely nithered. Um, I'm going to go home and have some uh, sachet of soup, I can't even say that, sachet of soup. Um, which was given to me very kindly by Pete Carr. Um, it is it's his favourite flavour of soup. Thanks, Pete. I kind of have the box there for uh, convenience for for the filming. Um, it's sheltered, waterproof on the lid, unless the wet rain's really sort of driving in. And it gives you a, a good base to sort of get sat down and, and, and see what's happening. Um, and some of the time, not shooting, you see, you see an awful lot. Um, and you can learn a lot from the behaviour of the little animals that are running around when you're not uh, intent on killing them. Um, certainly at that time, anyway. Um, but it's when the weather's bad and the weather's foggy and you're trying to get about it with your air gun, um, whether you're filming or not, um, having a, a feeder in a, a, a comfortable location that you can get sort of bedded into and, and, and sat. Um, you know, I've enjoyed some good sport today. Um, and when it's foggy and I can't get out and lamp, and if it's rainy and blowing a hoolie and generally miserable and cold and wet, 
been laid out. It's not the same as summertime rabbiting. Um, I've really sort of felt the benefit of this little box seat and it's certainly helped me put a package together uh, today. Certainly get some decent kill shots. Uh, and without that, you know, it would have would have been a bit of a struggle. Um, so if you get the opportunity to get yourself a, a feeder built and put into a decent location, definitely get on and do it. A challenging session for Stuart there. And now it's the Air Gun Show news with a roundup from the SHOT Show. This is the Air Gun Show news, brought to you by Valley Arms Shooting Supplies. This week we report from stateside. It's the SHOT Show 2017 taking place at Sands Expo Center in Las Vegas. SHOT is our first opportunity to see the gun trade's biggest product launches every year. Americans might be big fans of AR-15s and autos, but there's plenty of room for air guns at the show as well. British brand Daystate was there with a raft of new rifles. We called it the Wolverine 2, just to upgrade it. And we've added some detail, we've restyled the breech block to bring it in line with the Pulsar family, which was very popular, easier to load, slightly tidier and flowing designs. We've made some valve improvements inside, which is quite important for serviceability. So we have a removable central valve. We have added a new stock. So this is a stock by Gary Kane, one of the top stock designers in the world. We've got a nice finger groove here, which fits in. Really, when we did the Wolverine, that was difficult to do. It's almost like a custom uh, grip on this. So new stock, new core valve system, new styling, same price and same specifications. The same shot count, very nice 150 shots per charge in 2.2 in the UK. And this is a carbon fibre bottle, very light and a very short uh, ambidextrous rifle. The Renegade was launched a year ago. Uh, it was uh, a version really of the Pulsar. It's a mechanical rifle, but it's a, in a bull pup style. It's a very short rifle where the action is brought back over the stock to make it ultra short. When you do that, you move all the mechanism back so you have to fit a, a trigger, which is really eight inches further forward. And we've used an electronic linkage to make the trigger very fine. What we've done with this uh, Renegade, with this high power version, is that the electronic trigger becomes more important because when you go to really high power air guns, you start to load the trigger up. And with an electronic trigger, we've still got the same superb electronic system, even when we're shooting up at 30 caliber. And this 30 caliber air rifle shoots out at 80 foot pounds of energy, which is a very useful amount of energy. Uh, with the cylinder on this gun, it's doing 18 shots per charge, and it has a five shot magazine. So you get three full magazines before you need to recharge the, the gun. All the usual safeties on a day state rifle with the bolt open, even when the safety catch off, the rifle won't fire. You have to, take, you have to close the bolt to fire it. And there's an anti-double load system in the mechanism, so you can't load more than one pellet at a time. Next, we spotted something unique at the Gamo stand. It's a 10-shot brake barrel springer. This is the uh, new Gamo um, Swarm. Um, in the UK, it will be coming in the form of a Maxim Elite. The thing that's um, very um, unique about this is that it's the world's only 10-shot, uh, multi-shot magazine uh, fed brake barrel rifle. We're bringing it in in a, a wooden stock for the UK that will have adjustable cheek pieces. Um, the, main, the main benefit of this, obviously, is Similar to a lot of the PCPs on the market, it has a 10-shot rotary magazine. So it's very similar to what we use in Gamo and BSA branded PCPs. Load the pellet in as you would normally, into the loading section at the top. Take aim, when you fire, cock the rifle. As soon as you back up, you're ready to go. So there's no more fumbling around in your pockets for pellets or whatever. It allows you to get that second shot away really quickly. As ever with Gamo, we've got our patented over-moulded technology for the, for the moderators on the front. Um, they'll have our cap triggers on them. It does need high mounts, but they all come in the package. Um, we'll also be supplying two magazines so that people can go ready and off they go. German egg and giants Umarex show they can take on the US market with some serious air gunning hardware. 
It's the Gauntlet PCP. 3,000 PSI in the tank, 1,100 PSI regulator, and all for a price in the US for $299, $299. Bolt action, 10 round magazine, comes with the depressurization key so when you get low on air you can depressurize the remaining air and put a new tank on. The gauntlet can achieve up to 70 shots with a single fill of its uh, three, 13 cubic inch tank. And what we're getting is uh, 70 consistent shots, a consistent shot string with a standard deviation of about 5 feet per second. To achieve that price point, you know, we, we had to do a lot of studying and a, a lot of sourcing uh, to make sure that we could come up with the materials needed to, uh, you know, create a, a nice precision rifle for a price that uh, people that have been thinking about PCPs for a while can finally uh, afford to do it. Over at the Crosman stand, the new Benjamin PCPs offer something for everyone. This is the Marauder field and target version. What we've done is we've taken the Marauder that we've, you know, we've had for years, very, very successful PCP rifle for us. And what we've done is we've upgraded it with a factory installed regulator. And that's, you know, indicated by this silver band you have right here. So of course, the advantages of being regulator, number one, you can optimize how many shots per fill. And number two, you're gonna optimize your shot to shot consistency, which is really gonna help tighten up those groups for you. Uh, one little uh, difference here for us, is that this is actually a binary configuration, so you can either engage it or disengage it. So if you're a hunter, you want to maximize that velocity out of the gun, you can turn that off and now you can uh, have the highest velocity possible. Or you can engage the regulator to maximize your shot-to-shot -shot consistency and number of shots. This will be available in the 177 caliber and the 22 caliber. Um, this is a, also a new stock, so the old stock won't be backwards compatible with the new rifle. And finally, the next big accessory in field sports might actually be rather small. It's a center drive multi-tool from Gerber. Uh, the non-compromising product, um, featuring a slide open jaws um, and also the single-handed opening technology that Gerber also uh, patented for the military many years ago. But that's how easy it is to get that jaws open. Um, an easy slide, spring loaded. Um, some great features about this one is it's got a full uh, outboard knife, so no need to open up the tool. You can have it accessible right there when you need it. It's also a locking tool with a liner lock. Um, the namesake of this product is the center drive, a centrally driven access with a standard magnetic bit. So nothing proprietary, um, a real size tool, um, about three times as long as the competition, um, and a 30% longer blade. And again, a 420 high carbon stainless steel blade. On the inside, uh, you've got your, your backup bit, so whether you need your Phillips head or your flat head, you've got storage right there, down there on the bottom. Um, you got your file, uh, you got your pry bar, which also bought, uh, doubles as a bottle opener. Then you have your awl. Uh, really, the main purpose behind these two tools was usually you were breaking your knife. You were dismantling your tip because you were trying to poke a hole. That's why we feature the awl or you're trying to pry and you ended up needing to use your knife. So you got the awl, you got your pry bar, you have your, again, locking tool, and then also a fully serrated blade if you need. Any guy or gal that needs a tool that um, they don't need to compromise on the tools, they need the real full-size tools, um, that's really what the center drive can offer. That's all from Las Vegas, and that was the Air Gun Show News. Here's something for the air gunning gadget fan who has it all. It's the Binox HD 4 to 16 times binoculars from ATN. At £599, this certainly isn't a cheap kit bag item, but these day and night binoculars enable you to see in complete darkness and give you the option to capture photographs and video. The zoom is from 4 to 16 times. Beyond four times, magnification is achieved by digital zoom rather than optical zoom, so image quality is reduced at higher magnification. That said, most conventional binoculars are usually between eight and ten times, and at that sort of level, image quality is still very good with these ATNs thanks to the full HD colour image sensor. These binoculars really score when it comes to extras and features include GPS, geotag, 
compass and gyroscope image stabilisation. You can even set the display to show angle of pitch and roll. Despite all those neat features, it didn't take me very long at all to master the basic controls. To switch on, you simply press and hold the power key. It takes a few seconds to start up and then you're in action. In normal use, the forward arrow key zooms in, the backward arrow key zooms out, the left arrow key captures photographs and the right arrow key starts and stops video recording which is saved to micro SD card. Freehand video recordings can look a little wobbly but there is a thread to fit a tripod attachment if you want to make your recordings look a bit more professional. Press the central enter button and you open the carousel menu. This menu enables you to view captured photographs and video recordings, to shift in and out of night vision mode and to adjust the brightness of the display and of the onboard infrared illuminator. It also gives you access to more advanced settings such as recording parameters, the night vision colour theme and what appears on the display. You focus the image right down to just 10 feet using the collar around the right hand front lens. The collar around the left hand front lens focuses the beam of the infrared illuminator. Both ocular lenses feature dials that you use to tweak focus to perfectly suit your left and right eye. The eyepieces can also be slid in and out so you can get the width just right. These binoculars really come into their own when used at night. The night vision image they produce is exceptionally clear and they're a brilliant tool to use for spotting. ATN states the range of the infrared illuminator is 300 yards and I was able to spot and clearly identify rabbits at that distance. Although you can connect these binoculars to other devices via USB to download photos and video, features also include Wi-Fi. Download ATN's Obsidian app to your smartphone or tablet and you can view the action live on screen. That means a shooting companion could tune in and see exactly what you can see. The app also gives you access to the control menu and I have to say that it's much easier to navigate via the screen of your phone than it is through the eyepieces. Weighing just over 880 grams, this is a relatively lightweight pair of binoculars especially when you consider all of the features that are packed in there. Covered by a two-year warranty, they feel pretty robust and the rubberized finish makes them nice and grippy in the hand. ATN describes them as weatherproof, but given all the electronics in there, I'd be reluctant to expose them to a really heavy downpour. The Binox HDs run on three CR123 batteries, which are supplied along with lens covers and neck strap and carry case. Those batteries can give more than four hours runtime in daylight, but that time will fall quite significantly once you switch to night vision. Although external power sources are available, these binoculars are pretty power hungry, so it's important to remember to switch them off when you finish using them. So that's the ATN Binox HDs. They're not cheap, but they still cost less than a lot of top end glassware and they're absolutely rammed with features. If you're after a pair of binoculars to use by day and night, these could be exactly what you're looking for. Especially if you're a shooter who likes to capture the action to share with friends or upload to YouTube. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership. Yeah.